So for the next step, we need to create the part that the balloon connects to, so the balloon connector. Um, so we are going to first start by scrolling down here where it starts to tell us that the balloon opening is 18 millimeters. So we're going to make the connector stem 20 millimeters so that it has some sort of tension on the balloon to hold it on. And then it's going to have a three millimeter lip to hold the balloon onto the car to ensure that the balloon is stretched and fits over and creates a nice tight seal. You can see that in the picture here. So if we scroll down, it says to place a work plane on the flat area here on top of the body of the card. So we're going to drag our work plane. We're going to drop it and place it right here on top of the car so that everything we do from this point on is going to be sitting right on top of that spot. So it says to then second drag a cylinder onto the work plane. So we drag our cylinder over and click this shape up so that it's out of our way. And it says to size it to a diameter of 20 and 10 millimeters tall. So it's already at 20 and 20 and it is 20 tall. So we need to change it from 20 to 10 tall. Enter. And now it says to place a second cylinder in the center of the previous cylinder. So we're going to drag another cylinder over. And before we do that, we're going to size this one. And it says to size it to 23 in millimeters in diameter. So we're going to click on it and change it from 20 to 23 on this side, and then uh, 23 on this side. And then it says to have it be a height of three. So we click on the top and change that to three. All right, then it says that we need to place those two together. So if we rotate using our right button and highlight those two cylinders together alone without our box and use the align tool, if we click center and center, it'll place them together. And if we use our rotator, we can align it to the top. So you can see that that outer brim is now aligned to the top here. And we can group those two pieces together and then rotate ourselves back around. Okay, and um, then it says to go to the next step. So we click over and it says that we need to add an angle underneath our lip because there will be an overhang on the lip um, and the plastic will droop on the print and it will fail unless we add support. So if you look in the picture, you can see that this is the little angle that they're talking about adding here to make it so that it will print better. Um, and so if we scroll down to the bottom, it tells us the instructions of how to do that. And it says, number one, to place a cone shape on the work plane. So we scroll down, find our cone, drag it over. And it says to size it to 23 millimeters in width. So we're going to click on here and change this to 23 wide and 23 wide and then hit enter. And then it says it wants it to be 12 millimeters tall. So we click on our top square and change this from 20 to 12. Hit enter. Now it says to align the cone so it is touching the bottom of the lip and is centered on it. And we want to make sure that we rotate it 180 degrees. So if I zoom back in here using my little scroll tool on my mouse and click off the shape for a moment so I can see it better um, and rotate up. I can see that my cone shape is facing upwards. I want it facing downwards. So what I'm going to do is click on my shape and use the rotation tool here, my arrows, click on that and type in 180. So it flips it upside down. See my point is now facing downwards. Now if I scroll so that I can see just these objects, Highlight only the cylinders and the cones. Click your align tool and use your center and center buttons. And then if you rotate um, down, you also want to then align them um, to the top of the orange one. So what we're gonna do then is click it to the top here and group our objects. Now I realize when I did that, if I look underneath, I don't really see much of an angle, so I realize I made a mistake. So I'm actually going to ungroup, and I need to lower that purple cone, so I'm gonna click off my shape and just put, click on the top and see if it gets my purple cone. So I'm gonna click on this triangle, 
and lower it. And you can see as I'm lowering, this line is moving downwards and I want it to align with the bottom here. So now I can see the purple has filled in that gap and it is solely the cone that has moved. So now what I'm gonna do is scroll so that I can see my two shapes, highlight them and group those two together. Now it says my lesson is completed. So my next step is going to be creating a path for the air.